Okay, so this is a very long study. It's the epistemology study. It actually started off, this is the original um, set of statements that I used. It actually, let's see if I can find, it, it started off as something called the pedagogy research team. And um, we were a group within uh, on campus, the Institute for Teaching and Learning, and our idea was to study a epistemology, students views of knowledge and learning in a variety of different courses and so you can see there I am with technical physics mechanics um, Janet Thompson teaches developmental bas math, she had basic math students um, <clears throat> and then Dick Steiner who does intro to stats and Roland Arter who does um, PMP which is production and manufacturing processes and MD3 which is mechanical design 3 and when we initially did this study, it didn't turn out quite like we thought it might. Um, and that had to do with the initial statements. So the initial statements actually came from a concourse that was um, drawn from a woman named Marlo Schomer. She created an epistemology survey and we took that and it's all color coded. These were the categories that you got through factor and our factor analysis. And we see that there were some associated with ability to learn, um, some that were associated with speed of learning, stability of knowledge, structure of knowledge. And it was actually a little difficult to find her actual survey because it kept changing with publications a little bit. And so I went and I compiled them all. They were also, I think it was in her dissertation. So we had 67 initial statements. And it's things like truth is unchanging. People who challenge authority are overconfident. Um, and an expert is someone who is born smart in something. So we took that initially and we chose our Q sample. Right? Some people are good learners, others are just stuck with limited ability. So these are all just variations. And you see that some say are kind of general. Some people are good learners. And then 17 is I can depend on facts written in my school books for the rest of my life. But for the most part, they're very general. And what happened was we ended up with a set of statements that were, or sorry, of factors where we, we kept getting one factor. And what it really meant was that when students sorted, they didn't sort them based on their actual views, but instead on something that was more socially acceptable. And so we went through and changed them, made them I statements, um, did a number of things like that, took out some statements, and then added statements. So the yellow statements you see here are statements that came from actual student interviews and focus groups. And so here we have some new statements, right? I often reflect on my learning in this course. And so we selected from that, right? Oh, we revised it again and then chose a different sample with 44 statements that are all very, right, I-centric. <clears throat> so and so we see that that's the development of the concourse so that we just kept changing it. It's actually evolved quite a lot over time. So here is um, Q sample 07, spring. Oh, nope, that's not, that's other stuff. Oh, my little thing is in the way, so I can't actually. Oh, this was for a grant, for a CCLI grant. We were going to do a um, set of, um, assessments with Q. Here is, um, oh, that's from the pilot of that. Here is, let's see, we'll keep going. Here it is, the fall of 2008 sort. <clears throat> and here I modified it a little bit to do a teacher workshop, so we had to change some statements so that it was specific for them. But you get a general idea of how a concourse and Q sample can evolve over time, hopefully. And how things are selected.